water climate. And um, they also were giving money to uh, fix up their greenhouses. However, when they looked at the community, they realized they had this plot of land that was literally on the border of the Brooklyn Botanic Garden that had the potential for serious development. We already had a very tall tower there, about 33 stories. And so they said, oh my God, you know, we put all this money here, and we create all of these greenhouses, they could be affected if someone develops along this strip. And so actually, the idea of height limits came about from BBG requests to put height limits in that neighborhood. They didn't take away the billable space. That means that the developer or anybody who owned the property still had the ability to build the same amount of billable space, but they just had to keep it at a low level. And that was basically a 60 to 70 foot story building. The city did their own analysis, did their own shadow study, and came up with the decision that yes, this neighborhood, this area needs to be protected, we need to protect the garden, they specifically said that they needed to protect it from high-rise development. And they said very clearly that anything past 30 stories would be detrimental to the garden. It would cast shadows on the garden. It would affect these greenhouses and conservatories. And so they put it in. At the time, Dinkins was the mayor. And so he approved this uh, development. It, one person showed up at the hearing. <laughs> one person showed up at the hearing. Because it was just so, you know, it was Crown Heights, nobody really cared about Crown Heights. Developers were not thinking about developing in that neighborhood. But they had the foresight to understand that things change. You know, maybe one day a neighborhood is not wanted, but the next day it could be. So they wanted to make sure that they were protected. Of course, moving forward, as we know, all neighborhoods are now wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and specifically, Again, along the perimeter of this garden was wanted because we were situated in the Crown Heights. It's a predominantly African American community. It's a low to moderate income community. A medium income was forty thousand dollars. I forgot. Are we afraid to no, just wait? I've been to the garden many times. Can you tell me which part of the garden? Uh, this is right where the, if you see, you see this picture, the first picture, that first picture, that's, that's the entity, that's where it's at. And if you see, and you see that, you see that building on the, you see that building right there? So they want to build all along from one side of that building to the other side of the building. So the development will just go straight across and it will go higher than that building that's there. So that's on where the, conser the three conservatories are. Uh, and the greenhouses. It's along the perimeter of Washington Avenue. Let's, let's take this at the end. Okay. okay. This what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? I'm sorry? What happened had is that particular, it's like seven. They had three, they had three, they had they so the temperate the zone. one that's, that's, that's going to be shady. All three all of them. All, all three, three, all three all of them, because they're all in the same area. It was a desert, the temperate, and the tropical forest. Right, so they had a rainforest, they have a desert and they have a temperate zone. And they're all in the same area. The greenhouses are all in the same area. Everything is literally along this perimeter. So let me just put my bag here. And here's the greenhouse. <coughs> this greenhouses. This is all along that perimeter. And the development sites are along, right along there. Literally, not even a block away. So that's why they put the height limits there. And then in 2014, property began to get brought in that area. Same development sites the city has stated had a potential for serious development where they put the height limits. Continuum and Cornell Realty Management brought up the property along that area. And then they pushed for the community board to do a rezoning, a district-wide rezoning, so that they would be able to change the zoning through a community plan and up zone. However, <laughs> we, the community, pushed back. We were like, no, we do not want rezonings in our community. No, we know this is just, you're gonna just put heights. There's a height limited zone there. We don't want you to touch it because we understood that the only way that you can touch that land is if you rezone it. 
So we said, no, why would you want to, if you want to protect our community, why do you want to take a land that's already protected and then rezone it? That's because you want to go higher. And the, and the situation with that is community plans are very difficult to stop in a court of law. They're very, very difficult to stop in a court of law. So that's the way that they wanted it to happen. They wanted to happen through a community plan, but we stopped it. We stopped it at the community board. We protested. We got arrested. And da, da, da. It, was it was a history. And we became the troublemakers of Providence. <laughs> So after a while, the developers were getting antsy. They realized that they wasn't going to get the community to agree to a rezoning, so they decided to do it on their own. They went privately. So they decided to split up the developments. So they took the biggest development and put it over here, and then they took the two smaller developments, oh, actually three, <laughs> they had three developments there. So what they decided to do is they decided to do the first one first, the smaller ones first, because this one is a big one. Right? Big pop, big one. So they decided to say, okay, what we're gonna do is gonna split it up, and we're gonna let you guys go first in the rezoning. And we're only going to go up 17 stories, and we're going to let you pave the way for the monster. We call this the monster. Pave the way for the monster. However, if you turn to page, the second page, you see the first image was the height limits of six, six, R6A. And by the time you put the bulkheads up on the top, bulkheads are these little square things that you see on top of very large buildings. You have to consider bulkheads because they cast shadows. So when, when you're doing a shadow study, you have to include them because they cast shadows. So as you can see, the existing, the previous height limits was 95, and they wanted to go up to 235, which is the one that you see at the other end. However, they did not want, they did not take into consideration the 40-foot bulkheads that they could build and they did not take into consideration the fresh program where they can add another 15 feet. So that was 55 feet that they did not include in the shadow study analysis. And because they did not include the 55 feet, which is like almost six story building, they, their shadow study showed that there were no shadows that would be cast on the garden. True. So th that's what, now, the thing is, the state and the city say you have to include the bulkheads. And you have to include any programs that would let you go past the height limit. But you know, our city government, they don't listen to their own rules and regulations. So they just passed it on and said, oh no, no, it's not gonna cast any shadows. We're gonna agree to this. And the problem that we wind up having is that BBG agreed to it too. That's right. And we found out that that was because BBG owned a piece of property and sold it to the developer, these guys right here. And so we believe there may have been some kind of agreement between BBG and the property because they sold their science building to this developer and then in response said, oh no, nothing's going to happen to the garden if they build that building. We're concerned about the monster. That's our concern. We're not concerned about this. But you see, the monster, the, the small development cast three and a half shadows. The large development only cast one extra hour of shadow. So if you actually let this one go through, this one is only an hour more. So this one is actually doing the most damage. It might be the smallest, but because it's adding that three hours of shadow, and this one is only adding one more hour of shadow, this is the dangerous one. And they knew this. We knew it too. <laughs> and so we filed a lawsuit. We filed an Article 78. Now I just want to stop and say that we are so thankful for you guys. Yes, we are very, very thankful for you guys because you have helped us immensely with the work that you do. Because there was 
a lawsuit that you guys formed <laughs> called, <laughs> tell them the name of it, Scoop? Hudson River Sweep uh, versus Town of Queens. You guys know about that case? I don't know. Yeah. You guys should look it up because <laughs> it is yes. a lawsuit that um, Hudson River Sloop Clearwater um, filed against the town of Coinmans for allowing a recycling um, company to do a rezoning in the town of Coinmans to change an agricultural slash residential site into a, an industrial site so that this recycling plant could build Recycling company said that they didn't have all of the owners on the lawsuit, so they couldn't go forward mm. with the suit. It's the it's literally the exact case that we are fighting here, and we use it in our memorandum of law because it it, it set a precedent. And the the lower courts uh, did not rule in Hudson River Suit's favor. Um, then it had to be appealed, and then the appellate division did not did not rule in their favor. And then they went on to the third division. We, 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 we do not, we, uh, unfortunately, we do 
not trust in our political system. Okay. And this is how we move uh, forward in the world. That's good. I'm glad, I'm glad we're up, and that's I'm why we have been so diligent. And we have not just been diligent in the courts. We have been diligent in the streets. We have been diligent in our community boards. That's we, very important. We go to our community board and we videotape. We call them out. We, we call our elected officials. We uncover corruption. We are just not a litigation. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you heard that. Yeah, because, because it, that's how we've been successful. It's really a, a struggle for people versus money. Yes, yes, and we, and we completely know that. We, we, we know that. It's all about money, Peter. It's all about money for development, money for politicians, all about that. Um, so, would you like to, so that being said, we filed a lawsuit. We just got back a decision that our lawsuit is going to be moving forward. So we're finally going to get to the point of our lawsuit where they're talking about the merits. However, before that time, you want to, would you like to jump in and talk about um, Lori Cumbo? Speaking of elected officials, let's talk about our elected officials. She is the majority leader of the city council, which she holds the second most powerful position in the city council. So uh, Michael would like to tell you a little bit about her. This is on this page. I'm sorry, the pages are not numbered. Go to that page. Uh, yeah, so uh, Lori Cumber, <coughs> um, our uh, local councilwoman. Um, and before this project, she was also responsible for basically giving away another uh, city owned property in Crown Heights called the Bedford Union Armory. She basically gave that away to like developers. <coughs> um, uh, and she was actually re elected, or she was actually. She was reelected. She promised not to do it in 2017. Then she was reelected, and she turned around and did it, and she gave it away. Um, and then in 2018, uh, December of 2018, is when this project she she was uh, the deciding vote in the city council to approve uh, the, the Franklin Avenue rezoning. Um, and one of the big selling points that she tried to she tried to convince the community that it was a good. Uh, a good thing, a good thing for the community. And one of the things she she based it on was a um, she called it a miracle deal. She said she secured um, 117 affordable units for the community um, and other quote unquote benefits. And uh, we actually foiled to try to find out what these benefits were, and they are none. So she basically lied. Um, some people in the community like to call her lying. <laughs> we actually, there's a group of young Mega Ever students that actually created a shirt called Lying Lori. <laughs> and we need to wear it sometime. And um, I, I'm not, I haven't been, uh, I've only sort of been active in the activist uh, arena since 2016. But, um, you know, I've come to, in that short amount of time, I sort of, and like this gentleman here, where I've, I've sort of, I don't really trust politicians, and this is a prime example of why, um, because they'll say one thing, and then they, when they want to get into office, and once they're in office, they'll basically sell the community out. Um, and uh, yeah, she's a prime example of that. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so we fought. We we um, one of our basic issues that we had with this development was that it did not take into uh, consideration the environmental consequences of this development. And one of the things that we were concerned about was that not only was the monster coming down, but you had this whole major amount of environmental consequences that was not considered because the developers were able to lie on their application. And so they did not do an environmental impact study on this development. So we don't know what the negative effects are to the environment. We don't know what the water and sewage issues are. We don't know what the transportation issues are. We don't know what the negative effects to the gardens are. So we were really concerned that you're supposed to take into effect both projects, because both projects will be impeding upon the natural resources. And as environmentalists, I'm sure you guys are aware, that when you are looking at environmental consequences that you have to take into consideration every possible development because they all are feeding into the same resources. 
However, slick Rick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I call my uh, 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 um, the Department of City Planning. Just decides to break them up and say, "Oh no, we're just going to consider that here, and we're going to consider that there, so that you don't get the, what you call the accumulative effects." And so, a lot of negative consequences we feel would happen to the garden if the development goes up. Um, but. Our elected officials and our city governments are very, very corrupt. And our political system is very corrupt. We were able to obtain a temporary restraining order that prevented the developers from laying down the cement. But they broke that temporary restraining order. The Department of Buildings gave them a permit. Now, the, we put the Department of Buildings on the lawsuit. So the Department of Buildings was aware of this lawsuit, and they still gave them the permit to build it. Still gave it to them, even though we were challenged this in the court of law. And so what the developers did is they went and started excavating and ready to pour down the cement. And we had to stand in front of bulldozers, and that's on this page. <laughs> we had to stand in front of bulldozers, and we got arrested. I mean, they're breaking the law. They're breaking a temporary restraining order. We see the truck standing outside ready to come in. We're stopping with our physical bodies, and they arrest us. The, 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 we show them the raised seal of the temporary restraining order. And you know what the police said? That's civil, not criminal. We can't do anything about it. What? That's right. And yet they charged us with criminal offenses for, for stopping. Yes. So the Department of City, and then they were confused. They said, well, if you have this temporary restraining order, why did the Department of Buildings issue them a permit? <laughs> they had a point. I said, because they're corrupt too. <laughs> so I, 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 what am I supposed to say? Well, we gave them a raised seal, and it did not mean anything, because they were ready to pour down this cement regardless. But we, if it wasn't for the five people standing in front of the, well, it was all of us standing in both five of us that said, no, we're not moving, and they arrested us. And then the judge called us in and, um, you know, made them promise. And the only thing, you know what they said? We're sorry, Your Honor. <laughs> That's all, they didn't even say sorry to us. They said it to the judge. Like, we're in kindergarten, and then they threw sand, you know? Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we filed contempt of court and sanction motions against them that's supposed to be heard in April. Because we feel like, yeah, you should not be able to violate a temporary restraining order and get away with it. But this is how far these developers believe they are above the law. They do not believe that they have to adhere to the law. They do not believe, and the city supports them. The city is in cahoots with them. The city is, and this case is very important for them, because they know that this development is paving the way for the big one. And if we can stop the small one, they know that this stops the big one. They know that, that's why they've been fighting so hard. We had 17 lawyers show up at our court case, 17. Seven fully fledged legal, and we are pro se. That means we don't have a lawyer. We are pro se. We are doing this by ourselves. Yes. Another warning, um, based on it took place not so far away in Williamsburg. They always promise affordable housing. That's the big lie. <clears throat> almost 49, almost 50 stories high. The largest residential, more luxury development. Look at the HUD, affordable passage pass is done here. Now, one of the things that we know about the mayor is that his wife wants to run president. So you talk about we keeping tabs? Yes, we're keeping tabs. He wants his wife to run for mayor, for a borough president. Yes. And our position is, you're not going to sell off our garden and destroy our garden so that you can get money for your wife to be our borough president. That's not going to happen here in Blasio. You and your wife are going to be very disappointed. <laughs> okay? Because we... The president has said it's all right. But we, we, we will make sure that his life is a living hell 